You've been warned, Tina doesn't drink champagne. So that's why I'm toasting you in, in mineral water. Well, hold on. <laughs> Tina drinks champagne, but not when she's performing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Cheers. I do when I'm performing. <laughs> well, you're not dancing, are you? <laughs> oh, you just wait and see. Mm. Welcome. Mm. Ah, thank you. Well, after 25 years of ups and downs in your career, you became an overnight sensation with private dancing. <laughs> that's a nice face. Overnight? That's a long night, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. How uh, did you greet the success? Well, you know, I was working so hard that it didn't come to me as it did to the people watching, looking in. It was to me, okay, now I have a hit record, but there's press all over the world, and mm. there's photo sessions, and there's television specials. So I never really got a chance to really and truly feel the rush of what was going on except for how busy I was, and except for standing on stage seeing all of these people finally. You know, that was that was the rush and the, the, the acceptance of all of what I had finally dreamed. Mm. And you're in a business known for its exploitation of women, and you're the sex symbol. Uh, but still, you have survived. Could that be because you appeal to the women? I don't think it's really sexy. It's not... It's fun. Mm. I think it's what all women do, but they're not on stage. Mm. So all women can relate to what I'm doing because it's just a form of fun. It's, it's not really intimidating, really. I mean, I make sure that I don't embarrass anyone because I don't want to embarrass myself, you know, in my work. I think the only sexy thing about me is that I'm a woman and that my dresses are short. Mm. There's other women with short dresses that's, you know, fairly attractive and that do what I do. Mm. So it's not as if I'm... Marilyn Monroe kind of sexy or Bridget Bardot kind of sexy, you know. It's just a working woman that's attractive enough, mm. talented enough, and uh, giving the people some music or something they like. I don't really think that that title sexy is um, total the meaning of the word. Mm. But to me, you've always been the huge, generous, warm laugh on the stage. And then I read your autobiography. I, Tina, and I found out that I was completely wrong. Well, the laugh is always genuine because no matter how bad the life is, there's always that freedom of laughter and when you can really give that. And thank goodness we have that to give to be able to relieve ourselves. So that was, that was genuine. The smile and the laugh is always genuine. It's something that I've always valued because it's very healthy. That, that I kept. But the other part of the life was hard. But why I didn't stop is because I hadn't gotten what I wanted. And it's like now, how I am with you, what you are getting from the feeling of me now. And after reading the book, you would think that I would, I would be a broken person. I just didn't allow my spirit to be broken because I hadn't done what I wanted to do. This is 16 years of pain. Yeah. Why did you write the book? I was just really very tired of people asking me about the past. I can tell you, <laughs> you know, in the earlier years, people, especially in Europe, loved the music of Ike and Tina. And so they could not understand this separation and it was all very confusing. And I couldn't sit year after year, day after day, explaining it. So I felt, okay, I'll write the book finally and really finally tell the people what my life was like. And maybe they'll back off and let me go and finish this other phase of my life. I don't want to be reminded of a life that I live that I'm trying to forget, or that I have forgotten that I'm constantly reminded because people don't understand it. Now they want to know why. How could yeah. you have done this, you know? It doesn't stop. Yeah. <laughs> but it was 16 years of physical abuse. Yes, well, you know, my life hasn't been a wonderful one, but I'm fortunate that now it's becoming so. Mm. So that means there's a possibility that if you don't give up, that it still can happen. Yeah. You, you, I, I know you've been talking about men as the dessert of of your life. No, no, yes, quite all right, <laughs> but I didn't give up on the guys. They're still fine. There's some great ones out there someplace. Yeah. <laughs> you found comfort in chanting. Tell us about it. I've been practicing Buddhism for about 10 years now. Mm. Baptist was given to me through my family. My family was, on my father's side, was basically all church Baptist people. And so I think Buddhism was something that I chose as the woman I am now, something that I could relate to and something that was not decided for me by my, by my parents. Mm. Um, things that made sense to me was that the life doesn't stop. The soul, the spirit goes on and on lifetime after lifetime. So it's why a lot of this life of mine made sense to me because it, it was sort of um, leftovers from other causes from other lifetimes. 
it's very difficult for some people to relate to, but it's okay because it was easy for me to relate to and easy for me to go on with my life because of that. So it's no blame you put on anyone except yourself, you know. So that was, that was what my practice and is what my practice is basically about. Mm. And today you seem to prefer Europe to the States, I yeah. reckon. Why? It wasn't just today. It started years ago when I first came to Europe. Uh, I'm a country girl. Mm. There's something about Europe that's old and southern and like a country. Like, like the country that I was brought up in in America. America is... Of course, very young and new and city-like. And it's, it was fine, but when I came to Europe, I felt this is where I want to be. This is what I feel. This is what I like. Now, what was that about? I don't really know, except that as close as I've come to, to that now that I'm closer to moving here is that because it's like country people. Hmm. Well, now, we're not talking about ignorant people. We're talking about people that really live honestly and sort of a genuine sort of down-to-earth kind of life, you know. Mm. Ah, it just feels good to me, that's all. It feels right. Timeless Tina, how long are we going to get to enjoy your show on the stage? Um, 87, I'm touring practically the world. You coming here? Yes. Mm. After um, 87, I want to take, for the first time in my life, one year off. We're talking about really off. No press, no television, not even to record an album. The album following this one would probably come 89. Mm. <clears throat> now, also I want to try to work on my acting career because, because I still can, because I'm still in demand. Um, I didn't do it and that's why I want to go into trying to do that. So you'll see me on the screen, you'll see, you'll hear my music. And the traveling then will come as a desire, like if I feel like all of a sudden I want to play New York and the bigger cities and the and the biggest cities in Europe, the biggest cities in America and other parts of the world. But it'll only be like looking like six months or maybe three months then because it will just be for the sake of still making that contact with my fans. And, mm. But the traveling is just about over with. One day we'll both we will be gone. Mm -hmm. How would you like to be remembered? I think the smile, the laughter, I think so. Mm. Because it's, it's almost like when you don't speak a language and you walk in a room and you look at your fans and you yeah. give them a smile, all of a sudden they can feel without even speaking. And even not to touch sometimes, it's, it's the smile and it's the eyes. So it's, it's always that contact for me because it represents the type of person I am. I've never really sort of been a snotty kind of person. Mm. I've always been sort of very open and, and friendly. For that smile, I think, let's bring in the cake, wherever you are. <laughs> Blow and make a wish. <laughs> it was three Maybe days ago, actually. Okay, I won't wait. count them. <laughs> It's the trick, guys. The trick. I, I had a feeling it was the tricky ones. Okay. <laughs> great. Oh, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> it's great. Can I have a piece? Of, of course. course. You'll, you'll have the whole cake with you. But just a piece now with everybody. <laughs> Cheers. Mmm, mazipan is this. Oh, mm -hmm. thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.